This video will discuss the Nernst equation, which relates the Gibbs energy of an electrochemical reaction to its electromotive force. Okay, so as we've been discussing in all the previous videos in this chapter, we have an anode in our electrochemical reaction where oxidation occurs. Something gets oxidized, produces electrons, and those electrons flow from our anode to our cathode. And at our cathode, those electrons are received and a chemical species gets reduced. It gains those electrons, completing the chemical reaction. We have a change in potential, electrical potential, that occurs from the varying sides of this reaction. Our final state is the cathode on the right. Our initial state is the anode on the left. So the change in potential that the electrons experience is the potential of the cathode on the right minus the potential of the anode on the left. The electromotive force, the EMF, is equal to the change in potential that those electrons experience when there are approximately no electrons flowing. So evaluated at a current of zero when no electrons are flowing. If the electromotive force is greater than zero, then the Gibbs energy of reaction is less than zero. The electrons prefer to go from a low potential, from a low electrical potential to a high electrical potential because of the negative sign of their charge. So electrons flowing from low to high potential gives us a positive delta V, a positive EMF, and thus a negative Gibbs energy of reaction, which is going to give us a spontaneous reaction. So in order to figure out uh, what the Gibbs energy of our reaction is, we need to know what is the total charge of electrons that are going to be flowing. Okay, so the total charge of the electrons is equal to the number of moles of electrons times Avogadro's number, giving us the total number of electrons, times the charge per individual electron. So this is going to be equal to the number of moles of electrons times a quantity that we call Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is defined to be the total charge of one mole of electrons. So it makes sense that the total charge of electrons is equal to the number of moles of them times the total charge per one mole. So by the structure of this equation, we can see that Faraday's constant equals Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd per mole, times the charge of an individual electron, E, which is, uh, or the magnitude of it, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So Faraday's constant is going to be 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Okay, so now we're interested in what is the electrical work that can be achieved by these electrons? So the electrical work from general physics <clears throat> is going to be equal to the total charge times the change in electrical potential that these charged particles experience. So the, to the change in potential that our electrons experience is E, the EMF, N times, and the total charge of them we saw is N times Faraday's constant. So the electrical work that these electrons can do, the maximum electrical work they can do is number of moles times Faraday's constant times the EMF. We also know from previous videos on the definition of the Gibbs energy that the, Gibbs the change in Gibbs energy that occurs during a chemical reaction is equal to the minus maximum value of non-mechanical work that the system can perform. So work that doesn't involve a change in pressure or volume of the system. So I mentioned at that time that the only non-pressure volume, the only non-mechanical work that was going to be of interest to us in this course is electrical work. So the time for that has now come. So the change in Gibbs energy during a reaction is equal to the negative maximum amount of electrical work that can be performed during a reaction. So this maximum amount of electrical work is NFE, delta G is minus that. So the Gibbs energy of reaction of an electrochemical reaction is equal to negative number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the EMF, the electromotive force of this electrochemical cell. And this boxed result here is what we call the Nernst equation, which relates the EMF of the cell to the Gibbs energy of the reaction. 
All right, so some other things we can look at uh, based off of this relationship. The standard reaction Gibbs energy, delta R G naught, is equal to minus NF E naught cell. So we can define the standard EMF of the cell. That's also equal to minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. So the standard EMF of the cell, rearranging these equations, is equal to gas constant times temperature divided by number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. All right, the uh, standard EMF of the cell is equal to the EMF of the cell when the activity of all of the species in the reaction is equal to one. So the activity for um, metals, things like our metal solid, uh, solid nickel, solid tin, for example, those are always going to be assumed to be one by us. The activity of gases is the fugacity divided by one bar. And most importantly for us, the activity the activity of solutes is going to be their concentration divided by the standard concentration, which is one molar, one mole per liter. So something that is uh, a two molar solution is two moles per liter divided by one mole per liter. That's going to have an activity of two. All right, and then <clears throat> some more relationships we can build here. The Gibbs energy of reaction equals the standard Gibbs energy of reaction plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. This is equal to negative number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the EMF of the cell, which is equal to minus NF E naught cell plus RT log Q. So the EMF of the cell is equal to the standard EMF of the cell minus RT over NF times the natural log of their reaction quotient. So our next question for us is if we want to calculate the EMF of an electrochemical cell is what are we going to use to get the standard EMF of that cell?